A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Donald Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Heretics Christianizing the American dream. I said that you, uh, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. Beating oh, Jesus like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you with me. I'm asking you to brush your hair. With the sharp, that's what God commanded. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Master's Dog, episode 136, I believe. I could be wrong, give or take one. We're somewhere in there. I am your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. the Evangelical Norm. Uh, the Master's Dog is a podcast that I started a few years back, uh, responding to an LDS podcast called Saints Unscripted. They had a segment uh, that called Faith and Beliefs, where they started talking about the LDS Articles of Faith, and I wanted to respond to show how they didn't show up or didn't line up with Orthodox Christianity. And so um, I started doing that. I called the podcast Faith and Beliefs Refuted. After they finished the 13 Articles of Faith, they continued on talking about uh, theology and doctrine of the LDS Church, and so I continued to respond. Sometime down the road, I decided I wanted to respond to more than just these guys doing faith and beliefs. So I expanded my, uh, my realm of uh, controversy, I guess you would call it, um, to include people like Stephen Furtick and Joel Osteen and just false teachers like that. Changed the name to The Master's Dog based off of the quote from John Calvin that you heard at the beginning of the introduction. Even a dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet remain silent. And that actually is going to feed into very much the topic of conversation today. So um, thank you guys who have all uh, liked and subscribed and commented on this. You are the reason that I'm giving background on podcasts because we continue to get more and more subscribers. Every time I do a podcast, I look at the numbers and there's a few more it, it, and it might only be one or two, but for those one or two people, I will continue to give backgrounds on these podcasts so they know what they're about. And that's all because of you guys who like, subscribe, comment, um, share, all that makes that dude, Mr. Algae Rhythm, and I was calling him that long before Space Jam 2, uh, he sends it out to more and more people who might be interested in seeing that type of content. So thank you for doing that. I won't say like the video yet because you haven't seen the video. You don't know if you like it or not, and I don't want a dishonest answer. But you can subscribe, hit the notification button, uh, get all the content that I release here. Um, this is my fourth podcast going out today. Um, and should I have time in the next 40 minutes to do one more, I'll do one more. Otherwise, tomorrow after work, I will do a couple more and get uh, the last couple out. Uh, another stupid things Jory Micah does. Um, pro possibly the last one uh, as she faces a potential 10-year prison term uh, for biting a police officer and an unsolicited episode with a couple of singles from some guys that uh, we all, well, some guys we all know, some guys that might be new to us um, and going to respond to a couple of videos and stuff like that. So look forward to all that stuff today. Um, this is actually going to be one of my longer videos because there's a lot of video content to respond to and so on. So Dallas Jenkins is back. I saw this this morning. One of the pastors here in Salt Lake City posted this and said something about what a man of God. No, no. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that. I don't know. I'm still putting uh, Dallas Jenkins in the false teacher category. Because Dallas Jenkins refuses, refuses, wow, I'll learn to talk today, refuses to be the master's dog and, and bark when God's truth is attacked. Rather, he would probably, he would just try to nuance his way out of it. That's a word that I absolutely hate. 
Because when it lines up with Jesus Christ and the person and nature of Christ and our Savior, nuance doesn't have any place in there. It's black and white, and I'm sorry that's the way it is. Now, I don't expect everybody to know all the theological distinctives about who Jesus is, but I, I expect people, and Dallas talks about this in his little comments here, so we'll get there. He talks about this. I expect people to recognize the counterfeit and to call out the counterfeit. Don't ignore the counterfeit and go, well, there's nuance. No, there's no nuance in a counterfeit. So we're going to jump in. There's a couple of different videos I'm going to look at because he accuses guys like me because I've done multiple videos on this of taking them out of context and stuff like that. So we're going to give you Dallas's words, not stuff that I've heard somebody else said that he said. I'm going to give you the actual interviews, his words in video, cannot refute it. And, and put it in as much context as I can. But first, let's jump into his comments. This is his final comments on the LDS issue. So let's go in, go ahead and take a look at what Dallas has to say about this. And again, this is 16 minutes. I don't know that we'll respond to the entire thing, but we're going to at least get through the LDS issue and talk about that. So here is Dallas's definitive final comments. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. And no. Oh, there we go. Do this, Sound. but I think because of the growth. All right. Start it over. Hey there, it's Dallas. And uh, I was Dallas. hoping that I wouldn't have to do this, but I. Th hey there, it's oh. Dallas. And uh, I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do this, but I think because of the growth in awareness of the show around the world, uh, there has also been a significant increase in the number of articles written about it, the number of videos posted, the number of. Uh, posts done on social media, comments on social media, and um, there has been an increased amount of attention given, not only to the show itself lately, but to a comment that I made several years ago that I probably need to add a little clarification to. And this is what we kind of call the LDS issue, the LDS question when it comes to uh, The Chosen. And uh, the reason that I want to give this uh, statement or this comment um, uh, and I have it be my final comment on the matter, because I've given dozens and dozens of comments about it that um, seem to be unfortunately ignored by several people. Um, but uh, it's because I, I, I do believe that it's healthy to, for there to be some level of clarity for people who are wondering about it, because um, it's not my own personal uh, defensiveness that I, that I care about. I'm not, I'm, I don't feel the need to defend myself, but I have had had, I have had had. And of course, ads. It's Dallas Jenkins. It's we're gonna get ads. Sorry. Um, let me pause just to just to address this. You are defending yourself, Dallas. You're saying. I mean, he goes on and here again. The comment that I made to the guy, the pastor, who said, "Oh, what a man of God." I said, "No." I said, um, "Fork tongue deceiver." He's speaking out of both sides of his mouth. Oh, I don't feel like I really need to defend. You're defending yourself. This whole thing is you defending yourself, Dallas. So yes, you feel the need to defend yourself. That's fine. Defend yourself, but defend the stance of where you stand on Christ. Because again, he doesn't really give you anything. A phrase I've, I've had multiple friends, multiple viewers of the show reach out and say, is this true? And are you aware that this is out there? And did you say this? And, and, uh, and because of the fact that almost 100% of the people who have commented about this have actually misquoted me, no. See, the, again, here is a lie. Everything I did is your words alone. I've never quoted your words. I play the videos of your words. So here again, you are taking that jab at those people. But most of the people who have done this, K-Dub, uh, guys from Apologia, if they've done it, James White, all of this stuff, have put your videos on display so no, nobody's misquoting you, Dallas. We are giving your words, and I'm going to play those here in a minute so that you know I am not misquoting you. I'm not saying what I think I heard you say. I'm playing exactly what you said. Or at the very, at the very least, um, gotten it wrong in terms of what I meant and what I, what, all the clarity that I've given. I feel like I probably should give you a little bit of clarity because I do think words matter, and I do think topics like this are important. So... Um, I have, it, let's just start with the, the, the central question. Is it true that I said, um, which is what you've seen in some headlines or seen in some, some, uh, some titles of videos, Dallas Jenkins says, quote, 
and then it'll say Mormons or LDS, whatever term that they want to use. Mormons and evangelicals love the same Jesus, or LDS are Christians. Is it true that I said that? And the answer is no. Uh, the answer is yes. Let's go to the tape. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. This is seven minutes of video that I'm going to play uninterrupted of two uh, interviews that Dallas did, two interviews that he has done with the Saints Unscripted, and I'm, I'm, it's seven minutes because I want to give as much context to the comments that were said. So here we go. Here's Dallas lying. Well, either he's lying in these videos or he's lying right now. Maybe. If I can get the video to come up. Okay. Do, do, do. Sorry, technical difficulties. There it is, and let's go. Outside sometimes, but, but uh, yeah, it's been so fascinating because um, even my family members, when we first started this relationship with VidAngel, part of it was, well, be, be careful because of the common misconceptions about, about uh, our different belief systems, but also just protecting the show. Like, will the audience be bothered by the fact that there are um, LDS people involved. Personally, I didn't really care because I've, I've worked with people of all different traditions or, I mean, I've worked with atheists. I've partnered with, with people who've distributed my movies who had zero. Okay. And I said in the first video that I did that I don't care. I mean, you can have LDS. Let, let VidAngel be your distributor. That's fine. I mean, there are plenty of, of movies and things that we watch and so on that are distributed by people who are not Christians, and I have no problem with that. It's when you refuse, again, to defend what is true, to call out the counterfeit. Oh, desire to, you know, or connection to, to Christ and couldn't have cared less about it. So even if I had significant disagreements with the LDS community, which I've learned I have fewer than I thought I did. But See, even with that, I was okay. I was nuance. Oh, well, you know, I don't have as many as I thought that I did. And that, there are huge, I mean, and even if it's only, only one, okay, you can have no disagreements with the LDS church, except you have to have one. And that, well, two, the person in nature of God, the father and person of nature of Jesus Christ. Well, then I would say, go on to say person in nature of the Holy Spirit. Ordo salutis, salvation. Soteriology is also a big thing. But if you had no other disagreements with the LDS Church, this one is big enough to break fellowship over. Because again, they are presenting to you a counterfeit Jesus. And they know that they are presenting to you a counterfeit Jesus. It's comfortable with that because as long as they're treating the show properly, that's all that matters. So it's been, I, I can honestly say it's been one of the top three most fascinating and beautiful things about this project has been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community that I never would have known otherwise and learning so much about, um, about your, your faith tradition um, and realizing, gosh, for all the stuff that maybe we don't see eye to eye on, that all happened, that's all based on stuff that happened after Jesus was here. Um, the stories of Jesus, we do agree on. Again, the stories that are in the Bible of Jesus, absolutely. We, I mean, the Mormons use the King James Bible, the the stories that are there, their interpretations of them are different and so on. But it is a person of Jesus. And this is not what happened after. They think Jesus is a different Jesus than what is presented in the Bible. And they look at that Jesus in the New Testament as, G as Lucifer's brother, not Lucifer's creator. As a spirit being, as a spirit child of Elohim and a sexual interaction between Elohim and a spirit wife. That's how they view Jesus in the Bible. So, oh, well, it came after. No, it didn't. It is who they say he is. And we, we love the same Jesus. 
Wow, they even put it on the screen, man. But we're misquoting you. Nah, we're just, we're, we're taking you out of context. The Mormons put it on the screen. You know why? Because some big evangelical just told the world that they're Christian. That they worship, they love the same Jesus. Come on, man. Bark. Um, that's not something that you often hear. Sometimes it's like, oh, you, uh, they that's believe in a different yeah, Jesus than we do. Statement. Yeah. No, it's the same. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll sink or swim on that statement. And, I, and it's controversial. And I... I'll sink or swim on that statement. Okay, Dallas. It's time to defend who is Jesus. Not, and no, it's not the what came after he was there. It's not like he's a different person in the Bible and then, oh, well, we came up with different interpretations of him. But we read the same stories. They present to the world a false Christ that cannot save. They're leading people to hell. And you just told everybody in this video that sees that you weren't, you love the same Jesus that is tending people to hell, that cannot save, that does not exist, that is a counterfeit, and you refuse to call it out. Um, I don't mind getting criticized at all for the show, and I don't mind being called a blasphemer. I don't like it when my friends are. So you'll be called a blasphemer, but don't call my Mormon friends blasphemers even though they present a false Christ. And um, Rich. I've made it very clear that um, if, I go down, if I go down, I'm going down swinging, protecting my friends and my, my brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to go down swinging. This is not taken out of context, Dallas. This is not misquoting. This is your words. I haven't cut it or edited or anything to this video. This is exactly what was released from the Saints Unscripted interview. Not taking you out of context. I'm putting in as much context as I can. It's three minutes of video, and I've only gotten through two and a half minutes of it. I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we, we love the same Jesus. And, um, and you cannot. I've made this comparison before. I'm going to do it again. I have a neighbor named John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Okay. But his parents aren't Jack and Rose. So it's not the president, the former president of the United States. They can say they love Jesus of Nazareth. But if Jesus of Nazareth is not the creator God incarnate in the flesh, if their Jesus of Nazareth who walked in the, the streets of Jerusalem is the brother of Lucifer and a created being from the loins of Elohim and a spirit wife then it is a false Christ. It is not the savior of the world. And the guys at VidAngel are more passionate about this show. And I do hope that viewers judge the show on its own merits. And much like when you read the Bible, you don't go, hey, I heard that the ink that was printed on this Bible was provided by someone I disagree with. Uh, and so they're, or, or the driver of the, truck who's delivering the Bibles to this, to this church or this country, he's not a believer or he's a Mormon or he's a Catholic. Therefore, that Bible is no longer valid. No, that's a different thing than the creator of the show saying, I love the same Jesus as a bunch of people from a false religion that present a counterfeit. You're not the writer of the ink or the driver of the truck, Dallas. You're the creator of the show. And you just told the world that you love a Jesus that cannot save. They would never think that. So I hope that they apply the same thing to the show. If, you, if you're an, uh, uh, in, in the LDS community watching the show or watching this interview right now and thinking, that's an evangelical, I'm not sure I can trust him, or vice versa, that evangelical is, is wrong, that you Okay, so here's the second interview. And there's concern from some people, evangelicals in particular, because I'm surrounded on this project by so many people of all different faiths. For some reason, they seem to care more about the LDS people I'm with than anyone else. I'm not quite sure why that is. but Because the LDS people are the ones presenting a counterfeit Christ, an absolute counterfeit Christ, right? Catholicism has Marian worship and, and stuff like that and so on. 
but at least their doctrine of the Trinity is valid as far as I know. LDS, Catholic, agnostic, atheist, um, all stripes of the spiritual or lack thereof rainbow. And there seems to be this perception that I'm supposed to take advantage of every opportunity I have to not only share my faith and not only portray the Jesus of the Gospels, but to counteract, argue with, point out the wrong, correct, etc., of any other faiths that might have it wrong. And I just don't believe, A, that that's my role. Um, I believe my role primarily is to accurately portray the authentic Jesus to a billion people around the world. And in that, you have to confront the counterfeit. You have to confront the counterfeit. If people are coming along, just say, because you never say, you never go, Jesus is God incarnate, creator of Satan, creator of all things, not a created being, not a, a product of a sexual union between Elohim and a spirit wife. You will not say that. You will not confront. Just make it clear, man. Because your job, yeah, sure, your job is to present the accurate Christ of the scripture. But you're not doing that. Your nuance leaves everything muddled. And even in your new video, you will not do it. Bark, man! And I'm in my own church, surrounded by, occasionally, I shouldn't say surrounded by, but I know people who also have things in their faith or in their relationship with God that could use some education could use some buttoning up could use some um, improving uh, some clarity some maturity and i consider that to be true of myself so to me I, look i loved the interview i love melissa i think it's great i think she had the opportunity to share what she passionately believes about the lds faith so i don't think anyone can come away from okay so now he's referring to an interview he did with melissa doherty um i think that's how you say her name Dar daughtry daughtry doherty um doherty who is a former, well, I don't know that she's a former LDS. I, she's worked with many people and, and talked to many people and so on. But who did an interview with him, and she pressed him on this. And nowhere in that interview would he say, this is who the Jesus that I am presenting in the, in the Chosen is. God incarnate, God in the, now he says that a couple of times, Jesus in the flesh. So kind of giving you, but he never will call him, the second person of the Trinity, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. He won't do that. He didn't do it in the interview with her. They did talk about the Trinity, and I, I, I skipped that part of the interview. So maybe he did. I'll take that back. Maybe he did. But he even said when they were talking about the LDS issue in the, in the interview, which is what I watched, he said, oh, even as we were talking about our belief in the Trinity, it was all nuanced and stuff. There's no nuance. The Trinity... I mean, we may not comprehend it in our human mind, but it is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. The Father is not, is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is not the Son. The Spirit is not the Father. The Son is not the Father. But they are all God. That is the Trinity. No nuance there. You cannot give nuance. You start to nuance it, you're into blasphemy world. You're into heresy world. The Bible makes it very clear. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. God the Holy Spirit is God. There is one God. They are not modalism. They are not modes of God. They happen one. They're all there, all God, all eternal, all complete in, in omni everything. There's no nuance. But so that's the, the article, um, and I'll find the, the interview with her and I'll, I'll post it in the description. That video confused about where she stands on it. Um, I don't think people know exactly where I stand on all of it. And I think that's okay. Cause again, I'm a public forum. I because you won't do it. You won't say it because you don't want to lose the Mormon watchers. Cause if you break it down and go, this is who Jesus is. This is who I believe Jesus is. And any other Jesus is a counterfeit. You're going to lose them. So you're playing politician. You're playing the fork tongue deceiver to keep all of the people watching your show. The almighty dollar is making you ashamed of who Christ is and not willing to stand firm on what the Bible teaches.
I don't believe it's my job, nor do I believe it's really right for me to speak authoritatively or intelligently about the nuances of the LDS faith. I'm not LDS. I have it has nothing to do with the LDS faith. I want to know yours, Dallas. I want you to give a definitive, I was LDS, so I'll tell you what the LDS faith is. I can tell you exactly, and it's not nuanced, and it's not that I don't know. I know I was taught. I know what they believe. And if anybody says otherwise now, they're liars. And they will do that. I know. Look, Go look for Bob, whatever. I can't remember the guy's name. That gives the whole thing on lying for the Lord. When someone asks you this question, just answer the question that they should have asked. Don't answer their question. Answer something else. Be insincere and don't get in caught into, wrangled into presenting who, what you actually believe. The Mormons believe that Jesus is not eternal. The Elohim, God the Father, is not eternal. That there's eternal regression of fathers upon fathers upon fathers upon fathers. And there will be an eternal progression from here on out that they will become gods. Jesus is not the creator of the world that he claims to be in John 1. That he is proclaimed to be in John 1 the creator of all things. He was a created thing, and then he organized the matter into other stuff. That's what the Mormons believe. Dallas, give us a definitive definition of what you believe. I have to say, your website doesn't do you any favors necessarily because it includes so many things that every now and then I'll go to a, uh, an LDS friend of mine and I'll say, so why does it say this? And what do you believe about this? And they'll go, yeah, that's from X person who... You know, if that's not canon, that's uh, some one person's belief, and it's not necessarily everyone's belief or whatever it is. And so the person and nature of Christ is canon of the LDS church. I mean, see, and here, here he gets into all these other little things, and he won't specifically say, well, what is it? What, what are these things that aren't canon or the opinion of one person or blah, blah, blah? Who Christ is was taught by Joseph Smith. It's the foundation of the Mormon church. That he was visited, and, and again, there's nine versions of it, so pick the one you want. Some of them are just Jesus, some's God, blah, blah, blah. But the official statement is that God the Father, Jesus Christ, not triune, seen together by the Joseph Smith and, and spoke to him and blah, blah, blah. That is foundational. If somebody's going to deny that, they should walk away from the church because that is the foundation that the church sits on. If that goes away, the entire house of cards falls. So, uh, but that, that's more of a marketing thing than anything. I, I don't get into that, but uh, I'll just say, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride. I, and it, it all came out of my conversation with you. I said that you, um, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Um, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble, but I still believe that. And I'm not, I, I have a bit of a superpower and that I don't really care if, <laughs> if, if, if something See. that I... And again, I, I don't really care what people say about, you know, whatever I believe about blah, 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 blah. So here's the deal, Dallas. Do you love the Jesus that is not eternal? Or are you saying that some of these people at VidAngel do not believe that God the Father and Jesus uh, appeared to Joseph Smith in, as separate beings, as separate uh, deities? The, the people at VidAngel do not subscribe to what Joseph Smith taught about God the Father, because again, there is nu there's there's a no, I almost said nuance. There is a difference between those two statements, and if that is true, then those people are not Mormon, because again, they are denying what is foundational to their faith. It would be like us denying that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It would be uh, like us denying that Jesus was ever even crucified would be like me embracing the Jesus presented in The Last Temptation of Christ, played by Willem Dafoe, which gives you one of the greatest Pauline, fabricated Pauline speeches I've ever heard. Because again, Paul says in that movie to the Jesus when he comes and says, I never was crucified, I'm alive, here I am. He looks at him and he says, and I would say this to the Mormon Jesus, I'm glad I met you, because now I can forget you, because you are not my Christ say that I passionately believe is is uh, criticized. Um, I care, of course, if I'm wrong. I care if I, I, I believe in healthy um, correction. But you've I, I also... 
you have received healthy correction upon healthy correction upon healthy correction, and you refuse. We've now got your definitive final comments that, again, you refuse to heed the healthy correction that you've been given. When I went, I went back to the interview, my, my conversation with you, and I was like, did I, what did I say that, was, that caused this much uh, angst for some people? And I believe, actually, in the first interview, I was pretty nuanced with you. I actually said, I'm not LDS. I disagree with a lot of LDS things. Uh, it's just that the people that I know, at least the majority, um, especially when we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of the Gospels, we love the same Jesus. We may have some strong differences of opinion, and you may ha you may believe some things about Jesus before uh, he was before the Gospels, and particularly after the Gospels. But I, I believe that I have come to know. If you believe something different about Jesus before the Gospels, who he was before the Gospels, and the Jesus of who he was after the Gospels, then you don't believe in the same Jesus in the Gospels. <clears throat> if I believe in a different Donald Trump before the 2016 election, and a different Donald Trump after the 2016 election, or 2020 election, did I believe in the same Donald Trump during his period as president? Again, the, the words that you're saying are jumbled and deceptive. Oh, deeply, um, some LDS folks that I would die for, that I would crawl on glass with, that I have crawled on glass with for this project. So here, tangent at 30 minutes into the video, this is why friendship evangelism fails. Because he just said, I have LDS friends that I would die for, that I would crawl over glass for, and blah, blah, blah. And now he is afraid to offend them by saying, the Jesus that your church proclaims is a counterfeit, and this is the Jesus that I believe in. He won't say it now. And so now every interview he goes on, he has to give this, this muddled, uh, nuanced definition of who Christ is that is not Christ. He's lost his ability to stand on foundational truth that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Jesus said there will be false Christs. Jesus literally pointed to the Mormons and said there are going to be people who claim that there are these different Jesuses out there that are going to present them and don't believe them. But you're going to stand here, make a show about Christ and about the people that he called, and refuse to stand on the truth of what the Bible says and who the Bible says he is. And who share my belief to make the authentic Jesus known to the world. And if it's a different Jesus, then they're actually really bad because they're working really hard to get this show out to the world. <laughs> and uh, so if it's part of some really big con, uh, it's it's a really bad one. Because <laughs> the thing oh, is, my. Dallas, is, is they're, they're working real hard because you won't take a definitive stance. When was the last time you walked into VidAngel and said, okay, here is the Jesus that we are presenting in this TV show. This is the distinctives of who he is. God incarnate, eternal being, creator of all things, not Lucifer's brother, but Lucifer's creator. Not the, the spirit child of Elohim and a spirit wife, but the eternal, everlasting, alpha and omega from beginning to end, without end, Alpha to Omega, Christ. From before the beginning of time to the, the, the expanse of eternity, forever and ever, never changing, he is Christ. Have you walked into VidAngel and said that? And, and then taken questions and when people say, hey, what about Lucifer? Is, 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 and said, no, not his brother. Have you done that? You've not given them an accurate account of who you believe that Jesus is. So they can just go on and, and, and you, when you say you love the same Jesus, they go, well, our Jesus is this. Carry on. Let's get back to his definitive words and see if we can't finish this thing up. Um, I did not. Now. Um... So everything he said that he did not, you just saw everything that he said. I never took him out of context. I did not misquote him. I gave you his words and his words alone, unedited. Did it appear like I said that? Could it be easily interpreted as me saying that? I think that's true. I think we can agree that, um, uh, you know, words matter, nuance matters, and um, I probably could have given more context and clarity um, that I, then that I'm giving now. Um, Teaser, spoiler alert, he doesn't give any more clarity.
you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews and written thousands of things about my faith and about the faith of others. And um, I try very hard to be nuanced. I try very hard to make, to, to, to be cautious and wise and clarifying about every word that I use, but I don't always succeed. And I think this is, I think it's fair to say that this is one where um, I don't take back what I said, but I could have given it um, a little bit more clear. Again, I'm not taking back what I said, but I mean, how more clear, how much more clarity can you give than the words on the screen? We love the same Jesus having full knowledge, been informed multiple times that we absolutely believe in different Jesus Christ's. Um, I think it's also true that it would be a problem if I actually said those words definitively. If I actually said made the statement, um, evangelicals and LDS love the same Jesus or LDS are Christians, that would be a problem. And here's why. Not because there aren't LDS folks who are Christians and not because there aren't LDS and evangelicals who love the same Jesus, but because it would be wrong of me to ever say that any one group believes any one thing altogether. Um, that is just a level of arrogance that I don't have. Uh, and it's something that I actually believe has been a problem over the years. With so Paul was arrogant. Peter was arrogant. The apostles were arrogant because they proclaimed that this is what we believe about Christ. The church fathers were arrogant. What? 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 We have scripture. We have definitive. We have the inerrant word of God that says this is who Jesus is. Why will you not stand in confidence with faith? Confide. If you're not going to be confident in what the word says, you have no faith. Confide. Confident. With many people is whatever uh, title or label that someone has had assigned to them or that they've assigned themselves or whatever group that they're part of that we oftentimes will... Um, will label the entire group as having a particular belief or a partic particular personality. It would be just as dumb for me to say that all LDS are Christians as it would be to say that all evangelicals are Christians or that all Catholics are Christians or any other faith tradition. And it would also be dumb of me to say that none are. That's also a level of arrogance that I don't possess. I happen to be speaking about, and when I've talked about my brothers and sisters in Christ, and when I've talked about those LDS folks that I know who love the same Jesus I do, I'm referring to some of the friends that I have who identify as LDS, who I've gotten to know very deeply over the last few years in particular, and have had hundreds of hours of conversations with, and I stand by the statement that those friends of mine that I'm referring to absolutely love the same Jesus that I do. Okay, Dallas. If those people who are LDS absolutely love the same Jesus that you do, you need to tell us who the Jesus that you love is. Give us a definitive definition of who you believe Christ to be. Because if you believe in the triune God, the Jesus is presented in the Bible as scripture claim puts him out to be, then those people are not Mormon. They are not LDS because they are, they are going against fundamental beliefs of the Mormon church. And if... You believe in the same Jesus that they believe in as a fundamental LDS believing person, then you have a false Christ. So you have to make a definition. You have to give a definitive presentation of who Christ is. You don't do it. Now, you may still go, well, that can't be true. That can't be true. Um, and that's your right to think that. Um, but it's not fair to say, oh, then you are now speaking about everybody. Um, I know plenty of evangelicals um, who I would say don't know the same Jesus that I do and don't love the same Jesus that I do. Um, but I was speaking about some friends. What does that mean? Please, Dallas, tell us who you think Jesus is. Give us a Christology. What is Dallas Jenkins Christology? So we can see if it weighs against orthodoxy, but you can't. Because if it doesn't weigh against orthodoxy, then you're going to lose, which you already have, many orthodox believers in Christ. If it doesn't line up, if it does line up with orthodoxy, you're going to lose Mormon watchers of your show. And maybe distributors. ...that I have. And I was also speaking uh, uh, about Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus of the Gospels, the Jesus that uh, we're portraying in the show. There's no difference... 
How can you try to make a difference between Jesus of Nazareth and the the pre-incarnate Christ and the the Christ after the ascension is essentially what you're saying. Oh, I'm only concerned about you cannot Christ cannot be divided. You are dividing Christ and you cannot do that. He will not be divided. And um, I do believe and do stand by that statement. Now, um, I, like I said, we can't agree that it would be problematic for me to make that sweeping statement um, if, if, if I was doing that. And if it came across like I was, and that was, um, that was a mistake, and it shouldn't have come across that way. Um, but I've also given many, 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 many comments about it and clarified it over the course of the last couple of years. They're all easy to find. You can find it. There's multiple videos out there about that, and I hope that you'll consider those as you uh, consider the totality of my statements. Now... Sorry. This is what happens when you stream off of YouTube. I should have just downloaded the video. Hi, Shaq. What I believe is more important than that is the content of the show, because um, anyone who is worried about some of the things I say outside of the show, um, anything that I say outside of the show is going to be seen and heard a fraction of, um, uh, of the amount that the show is. So the content of the show, which I think is far more relevant to this discussion, is what I think should be most paramount because, um, like I said, that's, gonna, that's, that's in every country in the world now and be seen by lots of people. And uh, as I've said many, many times, the content of the show has zero influence or input from any formal faith tradition or church. None. I'm a conservative evangelical. I believe in the inerrancy of scripture. I believe in the supremacy of God's word. I believe in uh, the Holy Trinity. I believe in uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, and I uh, believe that Jesus is the Son of God and all of those things, all of the core tenets of scripture. Will you not call him God incarnate, eternal? Will you not call him these things? And I believe that uh, my job um, as it says, uh, when, we, when they, uh, someone shared this with me once about the FBI, that um, when the FBI is studying counterfeit and being trained in how to, uh, how to spot counterfeit dollars, um, they don't study the hundreds of different counterfeits. Uh, there's too many, and, and they, can't, they, can't, they can't figure all, them all out. They just get to know really well the real thing. And they get to know the real thing so well that they can spot a counterfeit easily. And that is, I believe, my job in my personal life. I believe that is your job as well, is to get to know. But the FBI, when they find a counterfeit, they call it out. They go, look, this is counterfeit. But you will not do that with the Mormons that surround you and go, look, the Jesus that your church presents is counterfeit. You won't call it out. So you know the original. Okay, I'm going to trust that you know who Christ is. The triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God in the flesh. So why will you not make a definitive? You said we love the same Jesus. Why will you not just say, but it's not the counterfeit Jesus of Christ. I love the same Jesus if you love the Jesus as the Bible presents him to be. But you will not say that because you are a forked tongued deceiver. Right now, you are speaking out of both sides of your mouth, trying to please everybody watching your show because you're afraid to lose viewers. And you should until you will make a definitive stance, which this says definitive in it, but apparently you don't know that what that word means. You won't make that definitive statement and you should lose viewers until you are willing to stand firm and call out the counterfeits. The Jesus of Islam is a counterfeit. Esau is a counterfeit. The Jesus that Joseph Smith presented to the world is a counterfeit. The Jesus that Brigham Young continued to teach and every Mormon prophet from him and to the current prophet Russell M. Nelson is a counterfeit. What good is it to know what a counterfeit is if you won't point it out to people and let them continue to try to spend it? Sorry, hit the wrong button. The authentic Jesus and the real Jesus as much as humanly possible. And um, so when it comes to the content of the show, it's not my job uh, in the show or outside of the show to try to give you all of the different versions of uh, Jesus or the, or the wrong things that people say about it. It's my job, um, both as a believer, as, but also as, um, oh, sorry about my phone here. Um, 
both as a believer and as the creator of a show that's being seen by so many, to try to get that right, to try to portray Jesus accurately. And particularly also in our Bible studies and our devotional books and our kids' books, and we have tons and tons of material that we're putting out that's very important to get that right. So why won't you give that definitive statement, this is the Jesus that I'm presenting and all others are counterfeit? The Jesus that I'm presenting is the Jesus of the Bible, God incarnate, eternal being, the the. The, the commander of the Lord's armies that jo, jo, uh, Joseph fell down and worshipped. The, the, the burning bush. The, the God of the, the Old and New Testament. Why will you not make a definitive statement of who Christ is? From everlasting to everlasting. Eternal being. Creator of all things. Everything that is said in John 1, 1 through 18 which absolutely refutes everything that the Mormon church teaches, pretty much. Why will you not make that statement and say all others are counterfeit? So if you believe in a Jesus that is Lucifer's brother and was the, the, the union, uh, the spirit child of a union between Elohim and a spirit wife, you're believing a counterfeit. That is not who is, but, but you have given license to every LDS person that watches this show. You said we love the same Jesus. So they see the Jesus you're presenting as Lucifer's brother and a created being. Because you will not make a definitive statement of who the Christ you're presenting is. If you would just do that, if you would repent of the statements you made and make a definitive statement, an orthodox statement of who Christ is, I would endorse your show again. And that content of the show is where I believe um, you're going to see the, well, not I believe, I know. You're going to see um, the totality of, or at least um, uh, the totality of my beliefs about Jesus of the Gospels and, and, and Jesus of Nazareth. Um, but I want to make another very... Again, you're dividing Christ. You're, you're just... You're... What does that mean, Dallas? What does that mean? Well, I, I'm just, I'm looking at this, this portion, this, this incarnate Jesus and everything else is different. No, he is the Jesus of the gospels. The Jesus of Nazareth is the same Jesus that appeared as Christophanes in the old Testament that appeared to, uh, Paul on the road to Damascus, uh, after the gospels, right? Who appeared to the apostles on the road to Emmaus, who, you know, uh, uh, John stood and, and, and fell down dead like he was dead at his feet when he saw him in his glory. Right? That's all the same Jesus. You can't just go, well, I'm just worried about this part of Jesus. He cannot be divided. Very, very important point. Um, and that is that the show is not a replacement for Scripture. Now, why do I bring that up, even though I've said that many, many times? I'm bringing that up because I think it's very dangerous for anyone, not only to take what I say out of context, but also to think of what I say as having supreme influence in their lives. Um, and that's not to dismiss my role as the, as the creator of this show, and I, and I recognize that um, that's a significant role. And I also recognize that it is, doesn't free me from, uh, from criticism and it, it, does not, it does not, uh, wouldn't be right for me to kind of dismiss the fact that, well, I'm not your pastor, so therefore I can say what I want and I don't need to be as wise or as cautious as a pastor does. I think we all need to be wise and cautious. Again, you're double speaking. You know, well, I don't have to be so, you know, my content, I'm, I'm you know, no, you, you are presenting Jesus in a show, which I mean, many people are going to go, well, it's a second commandment violation, but I'll let that go. But you are presenting this man, and, but you're not being willing to make a definitive statement on who he is. So you're not being careful. You're saying, I, it, I'm not excused from being careful about my words and, and this and that, but you're not being careful because you've allowed those who believe in counterfeits under the, the, the tent, into the tent, and made them think that you're presenting their counterfeit. But it is true that I am not your pastor. And I want to make it very, very clear that um, when it comes to um, what we need for our relationship with God, um, the number one Sorry. thing is God's word.
if you give me the next 10 seconds, Obviously I'm going to show you how to get started in voiceover and land your... And um, job in voiceover. now, is that all we need? Now, scripture is sufficient, and, and, uh, and I think that it's the vast majority of what we need, but I think also we do need interpretation sometimes. Where does that interpretation come from? Well, it can come from the Holy Spirit, but it can also come from the local church. And the local church, I believe, is what God has given us to be the primary resource in our lives for discipleship. Now, there's Bible. Okay, now here's, my, here's an issue that I have. I mean, if you're saying that Scripture is sufficient, why are you receiving uh, technical input from people who don't even believe in Christ? Or don't believe in the Christ of the Bible? You're receiving technical input. Well, Scripture is sufficient. Then you should be getting your, your, your interpretations of who Jesus is. And you should not have outside technical advisors that are not believers in Jesus the Messiah. Because if I'm correct, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, you have technical advisors that are Orthodox Jews that believe that Jesus was anathema because he claimed to be Messiah. <coughs> and these are people who are giving you advice on how to present Jesus. Oh, well, they only give advice on, on what that, that time of the world was. You are, if Scripture is sufficient, you're taking advice from people outside of Scripture. You're not being careful. Reading, which of course is number one, and the Bible is God's word and is all we need uh, for instruction and for doctrine. But our local church should always be uh, have, have the number one role in your life for discipleship and Glad for going you said that. Uh, yes, even that's deeper. True. And that's why we have sermons, is because a lot of times pastors, hopefully Bible believing pastors, are giving us context and clarity and historical context and biblical context to bring us even closer to God's word and to understand it even more. I should always rank below your pastor <laughs> uh, when it comes to influence. And so there are going to be things that I say over the course of the years that even if they're not taken out of context or not misquoted, uh, are still something that you might disagree with or something your church might disagree with or something that's just outright wrong. I'm sure that I'm, I'm going to do that in the many, many things that I say. Uh, I won't always uh, be right and I also won't always word things properly. And so Please always, always, always check the show. Check me against scripture and against your local church. Um, and your pastor should be that primary influence. In That's what I'm doing. And you're about to tell me that I'm intellectually lazy. For life, uh, for discipleship, not me. Now that said, I do believe that the show and our devotional books and our Bible studies can be effective tools. Um, and we've heard from thousands of churches and even pastors who've said that, who've thanked me personally for the fact that they, uh, like um, worship music or like a painting or like a movie or like a devotional book or anything that, that we've been able to give them even more tools in their toolbox that they might not be able to produce themselves that can bring, that, bring their congregants to the totality of God's word and the totality of, an, of a relationship with, with Christ. Let me clarify that. I didn't mean to say the totality of God's word includes those things. But God's word is total, so I want to be very clear. I meant the totality of our relationship with Christ. And God's word is the number one thing by far. But these other things can help us and can help be tools. But I always want So now scripture isn't sufficient. Or is it? Or it's not. Because if scripture is sufficient, then these tools aren't there to help. They, they, we don't need them. But you said that, that it gives them a totality. Both sides of your mouth, Dallas. I want to make sure that I'm my role in society or in the Christian faith is right-sized, and that, uh, and and if I do say something sloppy or I do say something that's even wrong, that that never um, replaces um, what should be the supreme um, authority in your life, and that is number one, God's word, um, after of course uh, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. So, where do I stand on some of these issues, and why don't I give more clarity uh, in general about what I believe about all these different faiths and? Um, I want to say something that I want to make sure comes across properly. So, so hear me carefully, and, uh, and I want to make sure that my tone is gracious. Um, I do believe it's a problem when people publicly state what they believe about your heart and mind based on something that they may have heard or may have read or even something that they heard accurately, but they did not do the work to find out what the context and clarity is. I do think that's a big problem, and it's not, it's not, it doesn't hurt me personally when a stranger assesses my heart and mind, um, and when they do it publicly even. It doesn't hurt me personally, but I do believe it's a societal problem. And I believe that if you're someone who hears a sentence or a paragraph 
and then makes an assessment about someone's heart and mind and the totality of their belief system or the danger or lack thereof of their entire faith or of their entire perspective or their entire work. I believe that is lazy. I believe it's intellectually immature. I believe it can be deceptive because um, it has been very, very deceptive. I've seen extraordinarily deceptive things written about me that have confused a lot of people. Now, to be so again, I did not take anything out of context. I didn't take anything that I think I heard. I took everything that you said, presented it accurately, and in and, and as much context as I can give it, and then made that assessment. So in all graciousness, you're calling me lazy, intellectually, whatever you said, and deceitful. But you are literally being deceitful. Again, you still have not given a definitive statement on what you believe about these things. To be fair, I've probably said some things that have been confusing as well, and that's on me to, to try to give that clarity. But, but you don't. Uh, I should Do never, it right ever, now. No, no, nor should you or anyone else, say something that is so out of context and so uh, uh, and, and is such an exaggeration or such a, um, a stereotyping of the comment that it can actually uh, d deceive people from what is actually true. So I would hope that in the context of all that we've all the materials that we've provided and all of the things that I've said, that um, that you would, if you're especially going Sorry. to make a public statement. A very strange day is coming to America. In short, a massive and surprising new transition or if you're going to hear a public statement and then make an assessment, I would just ask for the same level of nuance and thoroughness and grace that we try to give and that we should all give each other as we uh, make these assessments. And when it comes to God's word, we're always talking about the totality of scripture. And when there's a scripture that's out of context or a scripture that we don't quite understand, what do we do? Do we just make a sweeping judgment about the entire Bible? Like some people, people do. do. No. We judge it against other things, and then we come to a to, we come to an understanding of the totality of it. So we judge what you said against other things you've said, and we come to a totality of the fact that you are claiming to love the same Jesus as some LDS people, but you will not make a statement whether or not they love the Jesus of the Bible and are going against their Mormon beliefs, or the the teachings, the doctrinal teachings of the Mormon Church or if you are going against the orthodox teachings of historical Christianity and embracing Lucifer's brother. And that is what I believe we owe each other as well. And so um, just as, as a societal problem that we have, I hope that we can take the lead and not, not uh, kind of fostering this tribalism that I see so common where it's like, all right, we are in one group. And if, we, and if you say something, even one thing, that violates what we understand or we believe or we agree with, then you are no longer in that group and you must now be considered dangerous or you must now be considered a part of another group. And uh, I believe that that's uh, really problematic. And like I said, I believe it's intellectually lazy. And so if you would like to know where I stand on Jesus and where I stand in my faith, there's plenty out there. And it's, un and, and I'm gonna, again, I say this respectfully, it's not my job to clarify every single wrong thing that someone has said. Every time they say something wrong or if they say something out of context, people can't be uh, expected to try to address all of those things. All I can hope for is that you will look at all of the things that I've said and go, okay, he's clarified, he's made, uh, okay, this might have. So, but you won't do it right now. It would be so easy to just go, here's the clarification, it's right here. No, go find all the other stuff that I said. I've looked through the other stuff that you said. You, I've never found anywhere where you've made a definitive statement of who Christ is. You always do something like this. You can't say there's a lot of stuff out there. Go find it when it's not there. It's easier to find the false statements that you made. We love the same Jesus than it is to find a statement that says, I, Dallas Jenkins, believe this about Christ not been said properly but this thing was and it made it makes more sense when i look at it and i can look at um his life and look at his work and go okay flawed sinful human being but uh but probably more much 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 more in line with where i stand than, than i might have thought based on one um one comment that uh, might have been taken out of context so hope that makes sense hope that gives you a little bit of uh clarity on the issue no and i do ask none. that if we publicly disagree in the future none. that you uh like if you consider yourself someone who is a shepherd of people who needs to um to uh to kind of caretake uh whether it's uh, your church or your youtube channel um 
and uh, or if you're someone who's just commenting online, I, I just ask that we all try to be as respectful as possible, that we give each other, like I said, the consideration and grace. And uh, giving you so all the consideration I can. We're just digging so deeply into scriptures um, and digging so deeply into the relationship with God because of the show. That is ultimately the end game. The show is not the end game. The show is merely a tool. The show is merely a step. Um, it's merely one aspect of a, but a, again, an approach that we have. All right. All right. Let, let, here's the problem, Dallas. And let me sum this up here. Because you say, um, you know, if you disagree with one statement, it depends on the weight that is within that statement. We are right now talking about the core doctrines of Christianity, who Christ is. And the, and the word says, if you, if you don't have the son, you don't have the father. If you don't know who Christ is, if you don't have, if you're following a false Jesus, you're not saved. So again, you're talking about this show as a tool to draw people closer into a relationship with Christ. But which Christ? Because you will not make a definitive statement about who you believe Christ is and who this show believes. Because when you make a statement like, well, I, me and some LDS people, we love the same Jesus. Well, then some LDS people watch this show and they are becoming into a relationship with a counterfeit Christ that you won't call out. That is Lucifer's brother and a spirit child of Elohim and a sexual union with one of his spirit wives and the grandchild of somebody else and the grandchild of somebody else and the grand God of somebody else, blah, 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 blah eternally because you will not you given no clarity you just did you just did the greatest politician speech 16 minutes of politician speech that i've ever heard because you said you spoke for 16 minutes and said absolutely nothing to clarify any of the statements that i have criticized you for oh well there's plenty of stuff out there i've looked for it dallas i can't find it why don't you give me a definitive, you could have done it right there. This is what I believe, but you got to go find it. Hoping that the laziness of people will be like, oh, well, he said he did. I'm not going to go look for it. I'm going to look. And if I find it, I will come back and apologize. But if I don't, if I find our uh, interview after interview and statement after statement of going, oh, I've said it, it's out there, but it's not out there, then I'm going to come back and call you the liar that you are. Because all I can see right now is fork tongue deceiver who is doing everything he can to hold on to every little bit of viewership he can and not offend anybody. But in the doing so, you're offending God because you will not stand firm on who he is. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth was attacked and yet remain silent. Bark, man. All it takes is one, the LDS Jesus is a counterfeit. We recognize that because we know the truth. The Islamic Jesus is a counterfeit. Mary is not part of, of any salvation plan. She's not a, a, a um, I can't even remember the, the, the terminology that they use for her. To call out what is counterfeit, you won't even do that because you're afraid of losing viewership. And that is sad. So again, I stand by every word that I have said. I've given you nothing out of context. I've misquoted nothing. I've given you nothing but your words in as much context as I can without giving the entire interview. And those words are damning. So once again, I ask Dallas Jenkins, who is the Jesus that you present in the chosen TV show? Is he the Jesus of the Bible? Eternal? Coexistent with the Father? Co-eternal with the Father? God incarnate? The second person of the Trinity? Creator of all things? Not the spirit brother of Lucifer, not a created being. Which Jesus are you presenting? Because it's not, it's confusing. And until you are clear, then I, I have to call you what I have to call you. And that is a false teacher and a heretic. Other than that, I don't have strong beliefs about it. 
Sorry, this is a, probably the longest episode of, of, of the Master's Dog I've ever done. I hope you're able to, to, to stick with it to the end. Thank you if you did. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.